we are going to talk about um, knowledge and the process of learning. Um, and the question is, uh, has anything changed? Um, except for obviously the, uh, the environment that we live in now, um, the digital era that we are now. So uh, I would like us to, um, to think a little bit today about um, what knowledge is um, in this perspective of um, uh, constructivistic theory and, um, and what the process of learning is and what's the information and the whole um, kind of like chaos of information that is around us nowadays uh, because the access uh, to the information is uh, we can we can risk saying unlimited thanks to the internet but how does it relate with the process of learning and um, let's talk about knowledge first and I would like to ask you, when you think knowledge, what comes to your mind? What is the, your definition of knowledge? Can you share just what, what you think quickly? I don't know whether you can um, say something. Can I ask you about that? Feel free to use also the chat to write or also just if there, if somebody would like to share their definition, just uh, you can unmute yourself and start talking. Okay, I cannot see the chat, where where is it? It's down there where was the screen sharing button. If you, or you should see like three, three points where you can uh, have an extra menu and there is okay, the chat thank as well. You. Thank you very much. Okay, I cannot see um, uh, anything on chat now, or I cannot hear you, but feel free to just um, comment if you, if you want. So the question is, is knowledge just a set of information? Um, how do we, uh, what, what do we think knowledge is? Um, and the thing, and the uh, and this popular saying that we transmit knowledge to someone. The popular belief that when I teach, you learn. And the question is, is that in fact uh, true? So when I teach, do you learn? When you teach, does someone learn? So can we transmit knowledge? Um, can we deliver knowledge to someone? And let's take a look at um, this slide. In this slide, you can see the blocks. And I, I would like us to do a short exercise. I would like you, I, it, it would be great if you can do it normally um, and experience that, but uh, we have to use our imagination. So imagine the task is to build a house out of the blocks that you can see in the slide. Uh, imagine what house you would build. What's the, the concept of house for you? Uh, what's, what's the idea? Uh, how it, sh it should look? And how you would build it actually. Imagine the house that is ready from the blocks that you can see. And here, I don't, I, I cannot see how many people are here, um, but... We are 23. 23 people. And my question is, do you think each of you, we, we, we all would build the same house out of the blocks? Definitely not. Definitely not. Why not? Because all of us have different understanding of what a house is and how it should look like. 
-hmm. first of all, we have a different understanding. And why? Why do we have a different understanding? Because of our different cultural background, the different experience we have had, because of uh, the way we were educated, what we have experienced and seen all through our life, what is typical within the culture and the cultural context that we are used to. Exactly. Uh huh. So we have different. Uh, so we have different um, experience. We have different culture. We have different prior knowledge. And the way we build a house um, would be totally different. And what about if we added an uh, instruction to this? So you would have an instruction and you would build, you would have to build the house. What would happen then? I think it depends on the instructions. Yeah, that's my opinion as well. <laughs> Why? What, what, like how precise they would be, like in terms of from size to shape to sequence of, of blocks to colors, openings, whatever. So the more elaborate and the more precise, the more similar or yeah. identical the output would be. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then, how and then much... there is the architect who would do it different to the instructions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can follow the instruction, but still, if it's not very, very detailed, the houses would look differently. And I use this, um, uh, this building a house from the blocks as a metaphor, metaphor of knowledge. So, um, in contra uh, um, um, we just we we, ju we do not give knowledge or take, but we kind of construct knowledge in our brain, um, and um, what it means it means that we um, we integrate it with our experience with what we know, with what we've learned uh, earlier, and so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, about a, a little bit of history, and um, we are talking today about innovative education um, and how to revolutionize education and how we should learn and what, what is the a place of knowledge in a uh, digital world. Well, one, like 100, more or less 100 years ago, um, there was a guy, American guy, John Dewey, who, uh, who, who started something called pragmatism. And um, he also kind of did a lot of research on what knowledge is. He um, called uh, the theory of knowledge, the theory of inquiry, actually. And what he said, there is a nice, um, uh, some nice words he said, and this is what I would like us to uh, think about a little bit, is that give the students something to do and not something to learn. And the doing is of such nature as to demand thinking and learning naturally results. So when we look at the education system and the way we learn now um, at school, at university, sometimes it happens, but sometimes it's not. So sometimes the, um, how we perceive learning is um, that when I tell you something, you will know it. And um, not only do we notice that, but nowadays when we have the access to um, some um, um, tools, which we, thanks to which we can see how our brain works, um, we, can, we can research what the reactions of our brain are uh, to different um, stimulus and to different learning. Um, we can see what is effective and what is not. And sometimes what we think, I mean, 
we learn all the time, but sometimes we don't learn the thing we are supposed to learn, but different things. I know, is, is, does it make sense to you? So when we think about knowledge uh, from this behavioristical point of view, the knowledge is transmitted. So we've got something called transmission of knowledge and uh, it happens like that, that we have um, uh, someone teaching us and we learn. Um, the reaction is learning, but let's take a look at some other words which can go with uh, knowledge and not necessary transmission because um, also the neuroscience um, confirms that we construct knowledge rather than take it on, right? So what? how do we build knowledge, our knowledge, the inner knowledge we have? So let's take a look here. We give meanings to things. We also negotiate meanings. So when we look at something, uh, we learn something, um, we think what meaning, what meaning it has to ourselves. Um, sometimes we disagree with that because our experience is different. We also construct notions and ideas. We explore, we inquire, we gather observations. And these are all things that makes us learn and construct knowledge in our mind. Um, we do not just take it. We, we can obviously, we can learn something by heart and, um, and remember it and we can repeat it, but does it mean we know it? So uh, the question is whether just remembering things is knowledge. What is the purpose of learning nowadays? What is the purpose when we know that whatever information I need, I can check it in my phone right away and know it? So why should I learn by heart anything? Uh, do you have any ideas? Maybe we should think whether knowing is also understanding and if we only know some facts but we actually we are not sure whether we understand them well then we are probably not able maybe to use them in practice or implement them somehow so so I, and also there is the question from from Ginja which I think it's on the chat which is uh, also oh. quite interesting maybe in that matter uh, is it possible to distinguish uh, between teaching and education? Maybe it's also about this, this, this differences about knowing and uh, yeah, and then understanding and being able to uh, to perform the knowledge. I don't know, just the thoughts. Yeah, like that. yeah but but it's not only. Um, uh, remembering, understanding, and being able to, um, to use the knowledge to, adapt, to kind of um, uh, make a practical use of it, but also there is some more. So for example, we want to assess the knowledge, to evaluate. We want to uh, synthesize it somehow. So we want to make the connections between what we've learned and what we know and also some other things. And finally, we want to create. So we learn on not only to perform, but also to, to, to do some other things um, between teaching and education. Uh, 
yes teaching obviously is the act like is teaching so what is teaching this is also a, a good question because in our mind the teacher is it's all it's also the question how we perceive the teacher and what is the role of the teacher because in this constructivistic here approach um the teacher it stops being a teacher really but becomes a facilitator so is someone who um scaffolds a little bit the profit the process who facilitates the process of learning but doesn't really teach so doesn't really tell you how the world um uh, looks like yes um the teacher um enables you to kind of explore and solve problems and construct the knowledge for yourself because this is how it is we construct the knowledge all the time this is the, this is this is how knowledge um uh, is kind of built in our brain so whenever it doesn't matter whether we go to a lecture and we listen to someone uh, and um, uh, or um, it, it more matters whether the lecture is interesting, surprising to us, whether we actually um, whether we actually um, have this cognitive dissonance uh, and we learn something. Um, rather than what the method is, okay? So um, when we go to a lecture, which is boring to us, which means we do not understand anything, we will probably learn something, but not the thing that was the, uh, the goal of the lecture, okay? Because we learn all the time. Uh, and that's, uh, and that's, um, that's also interesting. So when we look at knowledge, as an outside concept, an independent concept, which um, is a question whether it is because everyone would build another house. So knowledge is different in each of us. But let's say we look at knowledge as something socially established. It is still, obviously, as you know, dynamic and changeable. It changes, yes? then we add to it the cognitive process the interaction with knowledge so this kind of chaotic confrontational and not necessarily just um we do not necessarily just order it and um cope it into our brain yes uh, but we need some interaction we need some cognitive process to to learn and then our knowledge in our mind is the effect of relation and interaction um, of the outside world and the person. Um, so, and myself, if I learn. Uh, so this is this is not this is not something like you know copying and pasting. It's not like kind of I take knowledge, I read it, and now I know it. There comes a lot of different processes in between to actually learn something. So um, um, in this um, perspective of constructivistic knowledge, it's not some uh, outside information, but this is the, the effect of the relation, of the interactions with a person. And what is important about the person um about the individual it's what you also said the different features of a person the experience the culture and the needs so all the prior knowledge so something we learn now is it must be connected to the prior knowledge and it also is um is uh, mentioned in neuroscientific uh, research so how we learn to to learn something we need this connection to uh, something we know so when we listen to a totally new information and we do not kind of um, we have no idea where to put it in our brain we will probably not learn it we need we need this connection 
right? So this is one thing, the connection uh, with something we know, where we put it, which draw in our brain we can put it into, where we can kind of, what we can associate with. And the other thing is that our all experience, what we know, what we've learned, uh, because, because of who we are, uh, how we were raised, because of the culture we are in, yes, yeah? so it all uh, kind of um, will uh, resonate with the new knowledge that we are learning. So, and what what is learning? Learning is experiencing the world, so we experience something, okay? We experience, um, we have this uh, cognitive dissonance and we reflect on it. So we not just mirror the knowledge, repeat it, reproduce it, but we create our own representation of it. And uh, we incorporate new information into the pre-existing knowledge in our brain. Um, does it make sense to you? Emilia, thank you. Okay, I can see, I cannot uh, see. Uh, okay, I have to turn on the chat maybe. But you can see the reactions here. Uh, there was one comment from Carl Guna at the beginning when you asked what we associate with knowledge and he wrote just before a question of Gunther that his immediate thought is anchored in episteme, tech and promises. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Okay. Uh, okay, Carl, can you say something about what you wrote? Something more? I just waited for the students to start, but, but uh, as a teacher, you, you just got my immediate uh, uh, where I, in, in, in each situation, anchor uh, my understanding of knowledge is, and then it is a, a kind of classical understanding, I think. Uh -huh. so, uh, yeah, it, it's the, 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 uh, uh, the, the uh, that could be derived back to Aristotle, as, but, but it, it's just a way of, of when you go into uh, some new experience, as you give right now, it, it's uh, yeah, it's where I'm where I'm start from, <laughs> mm -hmm. and and how I listen to you. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, um, so um, when uh, again, just to to to, to, um, to make it clear that knowledge learning is not copying and pasting, and the, the, I kind of uh, use this metaphor on purpose uh, just to, uh, to, to maybe um, realize that um, in our world, in this digital world, it a little bit looks like it. We think, okay, we carry our knowledge, we're carrying all the knowledge of the world in our phones, we can check everything immediately, but so why should we learn? Why should we go to school? Why should we um, listen to our teachers? What, what is it for? Um, and uh, well, and there, there comes the question of the whole point of the education. Is it just um, acquiring knowledge or is there something more to it? Okay, so to may, I, may I immediately ask you something? Yeah, um, please. Like uh, your viewpoint on um, on that, like when we compare it to the early uh, like master painters, they were like um, their their students. They were kind of copying them in the early years, so they kind of like were trained to copy the masters before they kind of uh, got more and more independent and. Uh, their own masters or they, they founded their own master class then. Um, so mm -hmm. it is, is an early version of copy paste, um, which is maybe different in terms of that you're doing something and you maybe also reflect. That's that's one thing, but it's also it's a it's a it's an early version of copy paste, I would say. Um, uh, so that's one it's... comment. Mm -hmm. And um, okay. uh, a second comment, um, because you mentioned earlier the boring lecture. 
I think uh, teaching is always uh, bidirectional. It's not. It it's nowadays uh, more and more um, we think that it's uh, one direction. So you're, and I'm, I'm struggling a, a lot with having this kind of idea of clubmate animation as a teacher. So you're not there to kind of. Of course, you should be motivating and inspiring and so on, but it is also bidirectional uh, because I remember one of the best lectures I have visited as a student was for was the most boring one, actually. So the teacher was super like the professor was super boring, but the topic was super interesting and she could not even kill the topic by presenting it so boring. Um, mm -hmm. So. And this was made basically in lightweight structure. So I, I, the path that I followed the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very interesting. Thank you very much. Um, but this is, um, it, it's very good that you said that, because first of all, um, what I what I want to uh, say is that it's not really about the tools. It's not really about the methods. You know, the teacher doesn't always, doesn't really have to make any show to, to kind of make you learn something, okay? Um, nowadays we say, okay, we have to have some fireworks during the lecture or during the classes so that students learn. Uh, why, why we think so? It's, you know, um, in our world, because we, uh, play a lot. We have all the time the access to um, our to, to our phone. Um, so we are online all, all the time. There re, there are different um, phenomena phenomena like um, uh, FOMO and some other things. So we are feared of missing out. So we are all the time, you know, stimulated, right? So we say, okay, so when we go to school, when we go to university, we need it as well. So the more stimuli, the, the better, yeah? So that, because we cannot focus on something. Uh, and that's not necessarily true because this is the example you mentioned about this professor and the, which was quite boring, but not for you because you you learned actually. Um, so the what what I understood the presentation was boring, but still the topic was interesting, and still you uh, actually uh, learned something from it because you reflected on it because you for you it was meaningful, but it was meaningful for you because you actually decided to give meaning to the, to what the person said. It doesn't really matter. Obviously, it's it, it's easier to listen to someone who is trained in how to speak and you know how to make a brilliant presentation and everything. But that's not the core of learning and teaching. Yes, uh, maybe it's easier when we have some visuals and when we have some like videos and some surprising things. Obviously, it, might, it may, may, might be easier from this new neuroscientific also point of view to learn. But the process of learning is, doesn't require to, you know, uh, um, us to, uh, to join a show or as teachers to make a show all the time so that students learn. But it needs us to kind of stimulate, the, stimulate the, their brains by making this con this cognitive dissonance in our brain and sometimes you can just say a few words you can um, and I will will show it in a moment you can actually uh, ask a few questions and then you will think about it you know days weeks and this is how you learn you reflect on it yes so um it's not really about how colorful your presentation is when you teach. It's not really about how, you know, um, many technical tools you use, how many, you know, uh, applications you use during your lecture or during your classes, but how you um, make students inquire, think about the topic, 
kind of how you start the process of learning inside uh, of the brain and not, you know, outside. It's not like we, we think like all the outside world and the, the thing, uh, the, the, the way we observe it and the more attractive it is, the better we apply it, the better we kind of, you know, um, learn it. But still, it's not the concept. It's not how our how, how the knowledge, how we know things, how we learn. Yes. And one more thing that you said, it's like it was copying and pasting. You said that you know, like to learn to paint, you first copy the uh, the pictures. Yes, um, the paintings. And I wouldn't agree that this is copying and pasting because you have to do it. It's not like, you know, now you can copy and paste without even reading something carefully. Okay. You just copy and paste and, and it, it's there. Yes. But you didn't even read it to copy the painting. I imagine you really need to think how it was done, how someone painted it how colors were, I don't know, mixed. I'm not a painter and I don't know much about art, but you know, I imagine this is the whole process that you need to go. You have this question, how did they do it? And that's how the process of learning starts. Yes, so if, do you agree? I mean, do you, what do you think? Yeah, uh, this is exactly the point that I wanted to kind of uh, emphasize okay. a bit. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, sorry, sorry, something uh, I went too far. Um, okay, so to, what do we need to learn? We need to be motivated. But then again, uh, when we think about motivation, so what motivates us? There are different factors. They can be kind of like we can think about the reward that is um, waiting for us so what we will get when we learn but also our inner motivation uh, so something which we call like we want just to develop we want to be better and this is uh, something that i will come back to later uh, in a moment so just to to sum up we need to have this cognitive dissonance um this conflict so something this some, some we need to be surprised by something we need to be interested in something and we need to know why we why we want it why we want to learn it why we need it so as adults we won't learn anything unless we know why and what for so when we learn something because someone tells us to learn it but we still do not understand the point so why it is necessary to learn probably we won't learn it. Uh, another thing is uh, we need to be actively involved in the process and we need this connection with our experience and also emotions like here I'm talking about this neuroscientific approach. So like um, emotions help us learn. Uh, so uh, whether we um, are kind of positively um, uh, whether we uh, think positively about the topic we uh, we are about to learn. Mm. And another question, and it's one of the most important questions, I think, is why do we learn? And what's the goal of the education? And obviously the topic, we could talk whole day about it because it's not very uh, simple. It's not a very simple thing, but why do we learn? When we ask students, why do they, they learn? Why they learn? They, uh, they want to have new skills. They want to know things. They want to uh, prepare to do their job. Um, do you have any others, uh, other ideas why we learn? Why do you learn? If someone from the audience would like to share something, you can just start, unmute yourself and start talking. There's the word curiosity on the chat. 
Okay. Hassan wrote it, Curiosity. Yes. Uh, was, yeah. uh, okay, mm -hmm. out of Thank Curiosity, you. okay. Yeah, actually I found learning, maybe there are different reasons for learning as a student. I was always like to learn and discover new things. But despite of the fact that I wanted to, uh, to, to do a job, but uh, yeah, mostly I was learning to search about new things and the curiosity was the most motivation aspect uh, for me to learn more and more. And that's why uh, I'm, I'm, I'm keep myself an update and learning new things, even if I don't have to, uh, because uh, it's, uh, I think it's a human, a human desire, human, uh, uh, human motivation from inside. So uh, when we, uh, yeah, if we put away, for example, if we come back in time, the people before, uh, before the schools and the universities, they were learning by themselves and they, they didn't have to do a job because they do their, their jobs like uh, do, uh, they achieve the reasons of, uh, reasons of living and the way of living by farming or whether than cutting the wood or whatever in the old ages, but they were learning to get experience. And there are many things that uh, push uh, a human to learn more and more. And that's why we see the increasing and spreading knowledge is a dramatic, uh, in a dramatical way that during age after age, the spread of knowledge is becoming faster and faster. And I guess a lot of people, I don't know, uh, maybe there are reasons of, to have a new skills or to have a new job, but still there are many, uh, there, there are many ways to do the job uh, with uh, just uh, the motivation for me is the curiosity. That's, mm -hmm. that's, thank you. Thank you very much, yes. So th this is very important what you said, because we want to know things. So we want to develop, we want to discover things, we do it for ourselves. And in fact, we learn all the time. It's not only like we learn at the university or we learn um, we learn uh, at school, obviously, yes, we, we learn all the time and we have access to information. So what we want to know, we just ask a question and we get the answer straight away. It's easy because we, not, we don't even have to go to the library to search uh, books, yes? But the, the, uh, and the other problem, here comes a little problem. I mean, like the verification of the information and what info, information we have and uh, this um, competence of critical thinking. So whether we can think critically. And there goes um, another thing, because that was just something to tease. So obviously we do not learn only to um, get the job. Uh, we do not learn only from these pragmatic reasons. We want to develop and um, Sometimes when we look at systems of, of education at the curricula, yes, we can see, okay, what the learning outcomes, outcomes should be and what you should know after the course, for example. But um, is it even possible after uh, like, you know, taking under consideration the prior knowledge, different motivation, to, for each student to achieve the same learning outcomes. It's just a question that um, I want you to think about later on. But the role, uh, the, the role why we learn and what should be the, the role of education nowadays is um, because we want to change the way we think about the world and about ourselves. So, not only knowledge, not only um, not not only uh, information, not only the set of information which we want to remember, but also we want to change to change. We want to develop, so we want to change the way we think about the world 
and about ourselves. We want to free from our own limits. So the more we know, the more we see and the more we understand. Um, we also want to free from ideological limits. So we want to think critically. We want to actually be able to um, inquire, to uh, think about um, what someone tells us in this curriculum, whether it's true, whether it really it is like this, maybe it is a different story. Um, maybe there is another way. Is that the only way of doing things? Yes. So what I'm saying is like education is not only um, just passing information and kind of doing the curriculum step by step. So like kind of um, transmitting the knowledge, but also kind of constructing, building different skills. And the skill of critical thinking is one of the most important. And it's not so easy in the world where we get things and easily when we take them and it's very fast. Yes. So we just read something, go through something and we forget it. And there is no time for reflection. We also learn to become a part of community. So uh, we learn with others and the Vygotsky added to what Dewey said that uh, we need we, we learn socially, so we need people to learn. It's not just the world and ourselves to where, where the process of learning um, is going on, but also we learn socially. We want to become a part of community. And um, also what is important is that we learn to develop our creative skills. We cannot create something um, of course, we can create without knowing anything. Yes, that's that's that, that's true. We can we can create something, um, but uh, by learning, we develop our creative skills. We start um, uh, this process of synthesizing the knowledge of, of our brain, asking questions, and only then we can find new solutions to um, to different problems. Um, Just looking. So, what exactly is just looking? Um, just please comment because uh, I, I realize it's like 48, uh, 9 48 now. So, we are running a little bit out of time. But um, if you want to discuss anything, feel free to just uh, uh, interrupt. So, teaching is not only delivering information because in now, in, in modern world, you know, delivering information, you know, you, you have the information everywhere. What you need to know, the skill you need to have is to select the information, to verify the information, to ask yourself whether it's true or not. When we've got, for example, deep fake, we can see, um, uh, we can see videos with people who are saying something, but these are not these people. So technology is so far that we can be really fooled easily. So the skill of critical thinking, of verifying information, becomes more and more important nowadays. So what is, just to, just to kind of, um, just to sum it up, what is constructing the learning process? How is it that a teacher becomes uh, the, arch the, the architect of the learning process? So what we think uh, as teachers is not only about the knowledge, about the information that we want our students to know. We, we want to construct the learning process um, so that they learn by themselves, so that the students uh, explore and so that they reflect on what they what they learn 
And this was the scope cycle of learning. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure whether I showed it. I can show it to you later on. Um, so what we what we do, we reflect, uh, we uh, make it possible for students to reflect on learning. We design experiences. So we think about what problems our students can um, solve. Uh, what's how how to make them kind of come to the knowledge that we want them to um, to have um, to discover to build to construct. What is important is to elicit prior knowledge. So we need to know what the prior knowledge of our student is. Is this um, is this um, clear? The prior knowledge. Yes, okay. So um, so our task is to create cognitive dissonance. So we need to uh, kind of um, challenge our students. Uh, we need to make them solve some problems and obviously make it possible to apply knowledge. But re also reflection is here crucial. Oh, no, 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 once again. So one thing that is uh, that one example which is, which might be interesting to you um, is um, uh, the concept of learning cities. Uh, do you know this concept, learning cities? I don't. I haven't heard of it. I don't know about the others. No. Okay, and I can recommend to you um, a public uh, 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 an article about by Jan Masklane, who shows how you know you learn by walking in the city. You discover different um, uh, concepts. You discover how people um, live, what problems they have. Uh, so you just by observing, by walking and creating some maps of the cities, you learn about much more things than just how city looks. Having obviously uh, interesting questions and things like that. I can um, write it on chat, the name, and I can then send you, I think, the, the article if you are interested to read it. Where is where the chat is? Sorry, I have problem with Zoom because I'm not very. Just uh, where uh, the three points are, most probably you have to press on the okay. menu bar. Okay. Okay. Well. Yeah. Okay, I have it. But you can do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now, uh, um, if you have um, any questions or you want to discuss anything, just feel free to. Um, feel. I, free I think you can leave this last. Um, slide the last one that you showed I think the last one okay yeah. unless you yeah yeah I just wanted to show you but because yeah. I think I missed it somehow the Kolb cycle so how adults learn do you, you can, remember you can explain it now yeah, so um, so uh, so it was long, also a long time ago. Uh, Kolb, David Kolb was someone who actually did a lot of research on how people learn, how adults learn, what we need to learn, and he um, discovered he established some styles of learning, what we need, but also he created a cycle of learning. It is called experiential learning. Um, and these are, um, yeah, uh, uh, to understand the prior way of thinking from students is also important for teaching. Yeah, that's what I said, what, what I'm saying, not just prior knowledge, prior way of thinking. Thank you. So prior knowledge and prior way of thinking. Yeah, definitely you're right. Um, Okay, sorry, I was just responding to the chat. It's so, and the, the cycle uh, tells you, Jesus, why does it? Okay, uh, how 
the adults learn, what we need. And what is interesting, we can start the learning process in different uh, points. So it doesn't matter wh where you start. It matters that you go through the whole cycle. And the cycle is like that. You have the concrete experience. So you um, experience something. And then there comes reflective observation, meaning you, uh, uh, you have the, some reflections on what you experience, and this is um, necessary in this process of learning. And then you've got abstract uh, conceptualization. This is the moment where the knowledge uh, is like when you start kind of um, uh, to, to construct the knowledge in your, um, in your um, brain, yes. And then we've got uh, active, active experimentation, meaning applying the knowledge. So you can start from anywhere, actually. You can start from abstract conceptualization by reading something, some concepts, yes. But then you need to go through all the steps to kind of actually learn it. Does it make sense? I started to be in a hurry. Uh, so, you know, maybe I just use some kind of shortcuts. Uh, so if you have any questions, just, just let me know. like the process of reading a book. Um, yes, can you tell us more? Yeah, sure, I just, <clears throat> based on this cycle, I think is, uh, I know, I don't know where it starts, but so when it starts, uh, when I start to read a book, I have, of course, some experience already based on the contents and then I start to read and reflect it and I have some like my own idea based on my uh, reading. And then I try it in reality or to, to, to have some new experience. So we reflected on that again. So I, maybe I search another book, which maybe more than were to, to just to continue with the experience. So it's like reading book, uh, books for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. somehow as, as an example. Okay, thank you. Yes. Do you have any other examples? Maybe someone? Anyone? Example, examples of how we learn or? Yeah, how we adapt this uh, Kolb cycle. Can you see it in your life when you learn? I would say there are so many examples. For example, uh, when I learn how to ride a bike, yeah, and um, yeah, it started with uh, I was saying active experiment. With nothing actually, from nothing. I, I don't know how to do that, and then. I start to watch, maybe someone will teach me and I try it and then I learn from that. I have even have like, uh, during the process, I, I always think, oh, why I, I can't, why, why others can, but I, I can't. And then I try to find out what is the mistakes and uh, it's more like a conceptualization <laughs> maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, even I'm dreaming of, oh, I, how to, how to made it and uh, yeah. A similar process of this. Mm -hmm. But may I add to that what just King said with this kind of example where you um, something that you learned to um, doing with your body, like this physical experience, uh, riding a bike or learning some dancing steps, for example. It's very interesting because you can actually learn how to do it, you can implement it, but it doesn't really mean you can teach somebody else after that to really uh, apply this knowledge. For example, I've tried to teach an already grown up person to ride a bike, because of course there are these kind of cases sometimes and, and it's absolutely okay. And it's so hard because you really, you, it's then then this process of conceptualizing um, the knowledge and finding an abstract way to really explain it 
um, this, this is a process that hasn't taken place before, for example, even you actually have this knowledge already in yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because without this active experimentation, you want to learn to ride a bike. I mean, you need to, you need to kind of try. And when you are an adult, um, sometimes we have this, our like kind of prior knowledge, some things that, I mean, our opinions that we think, for example, it's dangerous, something will happen. So we have some fears which stop us from learning. We don't want to experiment because we can see, we, we can predict what will happen, yes? So that, yeah, you are right, that's true. And this is um, very difficult um, to uh, teach someone how to ride a bike if this person has some kind of um, fears about it, yes? I don't know if that's the case, but, uh, but I can guess. Okay, so um, going to the last slide, which was about constructing learning process. Um, and once again, just to sum up, I don't want, I, I don't want us to um, to become trapped in this um, technology, uh, in this uh, digital world, in the fact that we learn when it's more attractive. Because the process of learning, the, the, the aim of the education may, it might be just emancipation. So to, to kind of think, be able to uh, think on your own, to, to, to have the skill of critical thinking, to ask questions, to develop. And obviously we can help students learn, but making the, the lectures more attractive using technology, and there's nothing wrong with it, but we still have to remember about the aim, the, the main goal of our teaching, the main goal of the whole education. So um, what we want, how we want our students to develop, what is important to them as human beings, yes? Um, and then design the learning process. Any questions, any comments? Uh, uh, I think there... Eva raised her hand, so please, Eva, please, uh, yeah, state your uh, question. Yes, hello. I actually um, hello. have a question still related to the Kolb cycle we discussed earlier, like a couple of slides before. Mm -hmm. And uh, my question is um, because there is this element of active experimentation. And during our studies in university, uh, we don't really get the, the opportunity to experiment with, uh, for example, implementing our projects, uh, since it would be too, way too expensive. And uh, my question is, uh, do you think the COPE cycle could also be uh, used or referred to uh, in terms of uh, simulating? Um, so, for example, we have the abstract conceptual, conceptual and then instead of the active experimentations, we kind of simulate how our concept would work. And uh, then um, we can take some um, something out of it. We can an analyze how it would affect uh, certain, mm -hmm. for example, urban fabrics, etc. Definitely, simulation is a good way of um, uh, of like experimenting. We do not have to, you know. Um, you know, active experimentation, it means like we have opportunity to try the knowledge, to try the new things that we've learned. Uh, in whatever environment, I mean, it, you don't have to build a house or I don't know, a, a church or something just to, uh, to experiment. You can, you can, um, yes, um, 
you can simulate. I don't know what the tools are, for example, to do that, to, to, to do that what the possibilities are. I don't know, using, for example, um, VR or something like that, maybe, but this is also experiment experimenting. Uh, so it doesn't have to be, um, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be building a church to experiment, okay? You, you can simulate this experiment uh, exp and experiment at the same time, uh, meaning kind of um, use the knowledge in some kind of practical um, ways, uh, this way of another or another. And there are different methods, obviously, to, to do that. 